Should you research your jokes before you write your jokes to make sure those jokes are original? That's what we'll be covering today on Ask the Joke Doctor. Hi, Jerry Corley, StandUpComedyClinic.com with another episode of Ask the Joke Doctor. Today we're going to discuss a tweet uh, that I got from another person on Twitter. And uh, this person uh, actually asked the question, um, he said, it's from uh, Darwin Barcelano, and uh, Darwin writes, Hey, Joke Doctor, I enjoy watching your YouTube channel. Very informative. I'm an inspiring stand-up comedian. I have n not gone on stage yet. Currently, I've, I'm writing material. Question, how do you know a joke has been done before? Don't want to be stealing jokes. Should I research the jokes? Um, first of all, thanks, Darwin, for uh, the compliment. Glad you're following the channel. And... Um, First thing I want to say about that is don't even worry about it yet. If you even ha haven't even stepped on stage, just start writing. You start writing from the stuff that you feel strongly about, stuff you're emotionally connected to, stuff that's close to you, stuff you relate to. It doesn't just have to be about you, first of all. A lot of people say, well, write the stuff that's true to you. Write the stuff that's about your life, that's personal to you. Uh, George Carlin, Jerry Seinfeld didn't write anything that was personal to them. They wrote everything outside of themselves. They pointed at the world, took the nuances, the little tiny minutia of the world, and they focused on that, and they either complained about it or just shared the observation and their point of view on the observation with the world. Now, Jerry Seinfeld, even though he was doing observational jokes, didn't do anybody else's jokes per se, but a lot of his jokes were similar to George Carlin's jokes. Uh, Jerry Seinfeld did a joke, um, it was, we refer to distance in time. We can say, uh, how, how far is it to the store? About 15 minutes. It doesn't work the other way around at all. What time do you get off work? About five miles. Now, that particular joke is a paradox. It's also a slight bit of irony. But George Carlin did a very similar joke in the 70s. So. If we sat there and worried, but nobody would accuse Jerry Seinfeld of stealing material, right? But if we sat there and worried about uh, if, if a joke has been done before, uh, then we're going to get mired in that paralysis before we're even getting creative. You know, there's an old saying, never edit yourself on the first draft. Uh, uh, editing is for the second, third, or fourth draft down the line when you're writing a joke. Just write the jokes. A second thing to understand about uh, joke is if you do write from your experience, higher odds that nobody else is going to have that same experience. And if they do, then you could wind up with somebody else doing a similar joke. Now, I've been doing this for about 27 years, close to 30 years, and I've had people steal jokes, and I've had jokes that were similar to other comedians. Um, I used to do a joke and the joke was right when Cialis and Viagra were hitting the market. They were still, they were doing, they were, you know how they put those clinical trials on the radio? Well, they had a clinical trial for Cialis. And they were like, hey, those people, the men, looking for men 50 plus who are experiencing erectile dysfunction, well, a clinical trial, we're going to test this new drug. The drug was Cialis at the time. And so I listened to the story and I said, wow, evidently there's a big, uh, uh, there's a big, uh, this is like a, almost an epidemic of people having erectile dysfunction. People can't get boners anymore. Uh, 50, 60, 70 year old people can't get boners anymore. Remember we used to get boners in five, fifth and sixth and seventh grade just for no reason at all. We'd sit, sit there and get a boner. You know, get a boner, you're sitting there, I'm in math class, we're doing the square root of nine. Why am I getting a boner? What's that all about? You know, and just some people reach in their pocket, move their boner, like somebody's going to see your boner. You know, you're in fifth grade, nobody's going to see your boner, they'll think it's a lump in your Levi's. But my teacher always had boner radar. She knew that I had a boner. I'd make a boner face, maybe. I'd be like, and she'd be, uh, Jerry, would you like to come to the board and solve the problem? And I, I wouldn't lie. I'd be like, uh, no, it's too hard. So that was the joke, right? Now, I did that joke and had been doing that joke, and then somebody came up to me and said, Eddie Murphy does that exact joke. And I said, no way. Because intrinsically, in my head, I knew it was my joke. I had come up with a joke based on this thing on Cialis, you know, and the plus personal experiences of getting boners in class for no reason at all. So I said, uh, so I looked up, I said, where was this joke? And it was on 
uh, Eddie Murphy had done it on his um, Delirious album. So I looked back at that video and I saw he did a similar joke and the joke was this. Um, man, man, remember getting a boner in fifth and sixth grade? You get a boner for no reason? I used to make a boner face. Uh, you know, my, oh, oh, no, he didn't even say boner face. He goes, my teacher called on me and said, Eddie, would you like to come to the board and so solve the problem? I said, no, I'll take the F. Thank you very much. Now, that's a good joke, but in my mind, I'm like, that's not as good a joke as mine is. Mine's a better joke. I mean, just throwing in, no, it's too hard, and having that double entendre be so perfect for that moment, I thought it was a better joke. And an old piece of advice I got years ago was from a writer who's been around a while. He said, if the joke is inherently yours, keep it. If it's inherently yours, keep it. If somebody does a joke that's similar, keep your joke. Um, the other piece of advice comes from Jay Leno. Jay Leno says, if somebody does a joke that's the same as my joke, I drop it because I'll just write more. So that's a good uh, premise to live by as well, is just keep writing jokes. You don't have to worry about whether people are using a joke like yours. Now, keeping that in mind, I also have kind of a rule of thumb that if three or more people approach me and say, somebody does that joke, somebody else does that joke, I drop it. Right? It's, and besides, I'll research after somebody asks if somebody does the joke. You know what I'm saying? Um, but I'm not going to stifle myself. I just write. And I write from my own experiences. And I write from my own research. I don't use other people's jokes. And um, I have a, I'm a stickler for that. Uh, staying as organic as possible with my own stuff. Now, there is something called parallel consciousness. Let's see. So hold on one second. We'll move forward with the slideshow I created because I can go on a tangent. And today's uh, New Year's Eve, so I might go on a tangent. Um, avoid low-hanging fruit. What does this mean? It says try to be as original as possible. Don't go for the obvious joke or avoid going for the obvious joke in your performance. As you're writing, go ahead and write the obvious joke because what's going to happen is that helps to get the momentum going. It opens the floodgates for creativity. If, we're, if we have a premise and we go for a joke, sometimes it might be the obvious joke. Uh, and, and then I would try to dig a little deeper to get a deeper meaning on that joke. Like for example, I do a joke. One of my earliest jokes was based on me. I'm Irish and American Indian. That's my lineage. That's my ethnicity. Right? So I was like, I'm Irish and American Indian. So in my exercise of taking these two dissimilar ideas and converging them, I list everything American Indian, everything Irish. The first top two things that I came up with, Indians tend to be drunks and Irish people are, are uh, heavy drinkers. Right? So I said, um, what does that make me? I'm 50% drinker, drunk, and 50% uh, drinker. So that would make me 100% alcoholic. I thought that was too on the nose, too simple of a joke to, to hit with. Right? So instead, I said, how can I say this but in a different way? And I said, uh, some of the joke turned out to be, I'm Irish and American Indian. That's my heritage, Irish and American Indian. So you know pretty much I have VIP seats waiting for me at any AA meeting, quite frankly. Yeah, I walk into that meeting. It's like, hey, Running Bear O'Reilly, we have a chair for you in the front row. So that became the joke as opposed to going right on the nose. So getting a little deeper and avoiding the low-hanging fruit of the obvious joke. So that's another way to sort of avoid that. Now, if you write a joke that's funny, do it. People will let you know if it's been done. And that's OK. Like when that guy said to me, Eddie Murphy did the joke. I just went back and did the research. I said, my joke's better. It's much more meticulous. And I just left it at my joke. Eddie Murphy is a much more famous person than I am. But the fact of the matter is, is the premise was the same. The joke was different. And I stayed with it. Um, I think for a little while I dropped it, but I brought it back because I was like, no, it's a good joke. I wrote the joke. I wasn't stealing from Eddie, and I just stick with that. You know? Have an unwavering sense of self. You'll see a lot of similar concepts get up there and be played. I mean, when Louis C.K. Uh, was <laughs> um, doing his thing, he, uh, not his thing, his comedy. When Louis C.K. was doing his comedy, none, none of his premises were really original. Everybody's doing, talking about kids, talking about the relationships with the kids, all of that stuff. None of it's original. His points of view on those premises were absolutely original, and that's what made him so unique. So 
If you write a joke that's funny, do it. People will let you know if it's been done. If somebody comes up to me and says, hey, man, that's an old joke. Somebody's already doing that joke. That comes from, you know, Eddie Murphy. That comes from Groucho Marx. That comes from Bill Burr. That comes from Louis C.K. That comes from uh, Patrice O'Neill. Right, Amy Schumer? Um, so if somebody says that, go do the research. And if you find out then that the joke has been done, then drop it and write more. And if you're continuing to write on a daily basis, you don't have to worry about that. We already discussed this. If a joke is inherently yours, keep it. This is the best piece of advice I got from a, a, a veteran television writer uh, about this. He says, if it's inherently yours, don't worry about it. Keep it. Just move on. Just keep writing. Um, here's another point. Uh, remember that there's parallel thought. Now, here's something I want to cover. Parallel thought is... Say a current, it happens a lot with current events. You'll see it on a lot of late night shows. You'll see that one comedian, that one, one late night host will do a joke and then another late night host will do that same joke. What I would, that's where the research at that level should be done and sometimes it's not and they really should uh, watch each other to make sure that they're not repeating jokes in a, you know, after a 24 hour cycle. There's no reason to do the same joke that was done the night before. This happened once with, with uh, James Corden and Stephen Colbert that I saw. Um, Stephen Colbert, or James Corden did a joke, then the very next night, Stephen Colbert did the exact same joke 24 hours later, same network, no reason for that to happen. You, that's where they need to be doing their research. But as an individual comedian who's just getting started, just try to write the best you can, get your material out there. The more you write, the less you have to worry. So uh, keep in mind also that if you work hard and write hard and let your reputation precede you, nobody's going to start calling you a joke thief, right? If you just continue to write and people see that you can write, nobody's going to come up to you and, you know, assume you stole the joke for the most part. You know, sometimes if, I mean, there was a guy that I worked with uh, and then a year later, evidently he was doing like five minutes of my material and... I went up to a club that he had just performed at, and the people accused me of stealing that material because they heard him first. See how that works? But all I had to do is sort of prove it. I don't have to worry about that anymore. You're going to have some of this stuff. It's just the way it is. We don't, nobody, there's no real way of copywriting material. I mean, you can tweet it, uh, tweet your jokes, and then you do have a timestamp on it. You can do the poor man's copyright. You can write your jokes out and then, or send them to yourself, certified mail and keep that envelope sealed and then break that envelope open and show that, that, uh, that you wrote it at that time before anybody else. But um, overall, just keep writing jokes. Nobody's gonna, you're not gonna have to worry about it. But I see this sort of stuff happen. I'll give you another story. One of my students, actually he's my nephew, does a, he's a big guy, right? And he does a joke about being fat, being big, being heavy. And he goes to the doctor and the doctor said, uh, how much do you think you weigh there, kiddo? And um, he looked at the doctor and he says, oh, I don't know, about uh, too much. And then I got on the scale and I realized, oh, wow, it's really three much. So he does that joke, great joke, gets a lot of laughs. Now, six months later, he sees another comedian up on stage doing that exact joke with the tag. Then he did his research and found out that this comedian worked with him prior to that. They were on the same show when he did that joke. Now, that joke's inherently his, but this other comedian decided to use it for himself. So that can happen, too. You know, what I do then is I'll just, you know, follow, go to the guy's show and then call out the punchline and then say, uh, it was a lot funnier when I first wrote it. So, and, it lets, and if they have stolen the joke, they will turn beet red and they will acknowledge or at least stop stealing the jokes. I mean, this has happened to me a lot of times, and um, so I've dealt with a lot of these guys who do this. So some people want to take shortcuts, man, and they want to get farther, faster, so instead of writing their asses off, they borrow or steal from other comedians. This will get you a really tainted reputation fast, so the idea is just write your ass off and don't worry about it. But you can't write your ass off if you're continuing to research and worried about whether or not the, jo the joke is original. So in the end, 
Just keep working hard, keep writing hard, keep doing what you're doing, but don't stifle yourself in the earliest phases of the writing. Stifling your creativity, worried about being too organic or worrying about too, being too original or worrying about whether somebody else is doing the joke is just another way to create an obstacle for yourself. And you don't need obstacles to get started. You just need to get started, get your material down, get up on stage and try it. If somebody comes up to you and says, hey, somebody else does that joke, drop that joke because you got a lot of others if you're continuing to write every day or almost every day. Uh, so if you do your work, you work hard and you write hard, you don't have to worry about any of that. So I hope you found some value in this video. I hope this, this helps you a little bit. Uh, and uh, I'm really glad you uh, dropped me a line on Twitter. If you have a big question dealing with stand-up, um, it's my goal to help you out. I've been doing this 27 years. I have my own studio in Burbank. Uh, I've written screenplays. I've performed in almost every venue possible from crowds that, are, that uh, hit, I think the max was 52,000 when I opened for Brooks and Dunn, and uh, as, as little four people in the, you know, at the improv at uh, 2 o'clock in the morning. So um, I can get, provide you with a lot of helpful uh, solutions based on my experience, and I hope it does bring value to your day. If you have any questions, uh, go ahead and hit me up on Twitter. Uh, I'm, uh, my handle is at Joke Doctor, and hit me with the hashtag Ask the Joke Doctor, and I'll be happy to answer your question in a video a lot like this one. Uh, once again, thanks, thanks a lot, and don't forget, if uh, you like this YouTube channel, don't forget to subscribe. And uh, by the way, everybody, Happy New Year. Uh, this is probably my last video before 2018 hits. Uh, take care, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.